What are the key federal IT priorities? What are the cyber challenges facing the U.S. federal government? And how is the U.S. federal government driving digital transformation across the federal enterprise? I'll explore these questions and so much more with our very special guest, Claire Martirana, Federal Chief Information Officer and Administrator of the Office of Electronic Government within the Office of Management and Budget, OMB. So given your portfolio, Claire, what are your top challenges, maybe three or however many you want to share with us, that you face in your position? And, and, and more importantly, how have you sought to address some of those challenges? Yeah, there are numerous challenges for technology teams all across government, but starting with the most foundational item, I think is really cybersecurity. It's priority number one. Um, and cybersecurity is really the foundation that enables agencies to focus on their mission. Right. Um, and that could include things like retiring legacy ID, launching new technology that is secure by design. Um, It is really a complicated area, but we have extraordinary coordination and collaboration among um, our cybersecurity colleagues. Again, at the Office of the National Cyber Director, uh, DHS is CISA. We are in daily communication with these teams, making sure that we are really supporting agency CIOs and CISOs. And, you know, the way that I think about this is, Technology powers our ability to deliver modern government to the American people, right? That That is, you know, full stop. We've all evolved to the place where people are much more familiar interacting with technology, anything from our mobile devices, you know, to all of our computers and the way that we navigate our lives. So we're focused on, in addition to cybersecurity, Um, and focusing on the cybersecurity executive order that went out um, a year ago, May. We also launched a customer experience executive order, um, which is really meaningful for making sure that we're delivering the best services to the American public that we possibly can. We've also, as an addition to the cybersecurity executive order, we've published numerous memos to actually help teams at agencies do the uh, tactical implementation work that they need to do. And that also includes our zero trust strategy um, that we published out after getting public comment. So I think the portfolio really is foundationally focused on cybersecurity, making sure that our systems are safe, secure, and accessible, and then making sure that the tools and services that we design and build from here out are secure by design within that zero trust framework and really focused on the delivery to the end customer, whether that's a member of the public or it could also be a federal employee who's using a system to do their job. So we kind of think of ourselves as the center of that whole uh, stream of activities to really help um, federal agencies uh, support their missions. Uh, What has really surprised me in my time in government, and oftentimes this was the same in the private sector, the challenges are not always hard from a technical standpoint, that we are not, don't have a complex technical problem that is confounding all of the engineers and no one can create a path forward. I really think that um, some of the most important um, technology problems that we are dealing facing today, you know, from the adoption of artificial intelligence or quantum computing is really focused on making sure that we are fostering an environment where our technology workforce can continue to learn, be trained, and have opportunities to work on these more modern technologies. So, Claire, you've pointed out in, in your in your discussions and presentations as 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 the federal CIO that modern information technology functions as the backbone of how government today serves the public in a digital age. I'm wondering if you could highlight for us your key IT priorities for the administration f- across the federal government, and and how does the federal IT operating plan factor in? to realizing this vision, help shape it, inform it, and achieve your IT strategy? 
Well, bolstering cybersecurity, you'll continue to hear me foot stomp, is, is mission critical, job one. Also, modernizing our IT. We have a lot of legacy systems in government, and we are on a journey to continue to modernize our entire enterprise IT. Um, improving customer experience very critical, making sure that we're meeting the expectations of the American public, who, especially during COVID, have learned that digital interactions can be safe, seamless, and secure, and they want that from their government. And then I think the the fourth component is really securing and using our data as a strategic asset. That is absolutely critical because we provide the government with data about us in order to complete a task or engage in a service. And we oftentimes ask repetitive questions in silos. And I think that we all recognize that we can do better both securing that data and making sure that we can deliver better digital programs by understanding the data we already have and helping someone make a more informed decision or take a path forward. The IT operating plan was really important for us to bring the technology teams together at the center of government, the United States Digital Service, our colleagues at GSA, Um, and the Office of the Federal CIO together to talk about how we work independently, how we work with each other, how we support each other, and, and, and really importantly, how we drive impact from the center to best help agencies and technology teams across government deliver their success for their own missions. I want to get into a little bit more of the cyber challenges. And, you know, uh, it's an important thing. It kind of undergirds everything we do. The, 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 the whole system and the infrastructure needs to be secure in order to operate. So, you know, Claire, what are the key cyber challenges facing U.S. federal agencies and how are you working to address these challenges and to mitigate the risk and impact of threats? to data systems and networks? This is the number one team sport that we are participating in, um, along with the Office of the National Cyber Director, CISA, uh, you know, NSC, NSA, right? There is a, a multitude of acronyms with all of our efforts focused on cybersecurity. So at, at the highest level, we're really architected a new model for cybersecurity across the federal government. You know, we're in a unique threat environment. Our adversaries are pointing an enormous amount of resources at us, at particular federal agencies, and they, frankly, the whole federal enterprise. So it is really critically important that we work like a team to make sure that cyber defense is our singular goal. And we're also working to make sure um, at individual agencies that we're keeping, um, you know, Americans information confidential, that we're preserving data integrity, that we're um, remaining accessible and resilient to these nation state attacks. But in a lot of ways, it really does require us to work and think differently, to deploy new technology, and very importantly, to adopt new mindsets. We cannot keep operating the way that we were previously operating and expect that we're going to have any different outcomes. So, you know, we published the Zero Trust Strategy. Um, We made sure that prior to publishing it, that we took a period for public comment um, to make it better, right? We cannot do the work that we all do without our private sector partners, without academics and researchers that are spending every day focused on these areas. So we believe that the zero trust strategy was really showed how the federal government was leaning forward and leading in this area. Um, And we are also working very hard to make sure that we are cascading this message to all levels of the workforce. This requires senior leadership that is assuming you know, responsibility for the cybersecurity posture of their agencies, as well as building staff capabilities and technology solutions and architecture and budget and investment to meet 
today and tomorrow's challenges, um, and most importantly, delivering impact. So I'd say that, again, team sport, we're all working together collaboratively, but it is going to take the workforce really embracing this wholesale change in um, never trust, always verify, um, as the new method at which we have to think about securing our missions. Claire, the Technology Modernization Fund, TMF, has seen tremendous demand. After the $1 billion appropriation through the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, would you give us an update on the fund? Uh, What are the strengths of TMF? And looking ahead, what are the aims of the fund? And are there any ready-to-go projects you'd like to highlight? This is one of my absolute favorite topics because TMF was a great program prior to the American Rescue Plan. But what we've really been able to do with the influx of the billion dollars is to really meet the need today. And and today's need is based on speed and dealing with some of these, you know, exigent threats that we discussed previously. So many large scale IT investments fail. Right, they are multi-year uh, projects that that go out, um, and by the time you get the funding and contracting vehicles in place, oftentimes things change, possibly staffing changes. So we know from private sector that there are better ways to actually build technology faster, doing things like building minimally viable projects. Um, launching something and being able to test with your users immediately rather than doing these very large scale implementations. So TMF is really a champion of this. We've played a significant role, you know, vetting very large scale proposals from a technical standpoint to make sure that they will be successful if they have to be large and multi-year and really trying to focus on reducing the failure rate so that we don't waste taxpayers' money and we don't waste agencies' time um, away from their mission. So the fund is currently managing over $600 million. Uh, I think we have 33 investments at 18 different federal agencies. Um, One of the really important things that TMF has done, it's given us a real purview into the federal landscape. So we've received and reviewed over 220 proposals, totaling over three and a half billion dollars of funding demand. So what's been great about that is it gives us a really good idea of what the modernization challenges are at agencies. And oftentimes we have multiple agencies trying to solve similar problems. So we are also doing things like matching people up, building communities of practice so that we can all run fast together and learn from the successes and occasional failures so that we don't repeat them. So it has been having technologists upfront in the process and having us manage these programs on a quarterly basis. Everybody who gets a TMF investment has to come back every quarter and report out to the board how they're doing, where they're running into challenges, Oftentimes they have a problem that they're trying to solve that someone on the board has either solved or knows someone that they can connect the program team to, to be able to accelerate that um, solutioning. So I'm excited about TMF. We didn't have any instant projects that we were able to pour TMF on and they blossomed in a minute, but you are going to see consistent um, feedback over time that by having technologists up front by methodically managing these programs with technology experts in government along the way, we will drive down the failure rate and improve outcomes. Full stop. And I'm excited about that. I want to dig a little deeper into the customer experience. What is being done, Claire, to establish that uh, sort of a mindset culture across federal government um, agencies who provide services to make sure and ensure that they are, you know, the structures there, the consistency there, sort of a no wrong door kind of concept. And and perhaps more importantly, you could kind of give us a sense of the journey mapping that you're doing around specific customer experiences um, and, and how to make sure that agencies are meeting today's customer expectations. 
Yeah, President Biden um, is the customer experience cheerleader in chief, <laughs> right? He states constantly that the American people deserve a government that works for them, right? You shouldn't have to know how to know how to interact with our government to get information, benefits, or services. So in uh, having the president actually launch and sign a customer experience executive order really puts this at the focus of every single agency. And what's exciting to me about this is, you know, technology is really the upstream part of this, right? We're making sure that um, we are engaging the entire C-suite on this effort. The President's Management Council has off also um, chosen components of customer experience and the federal workforce um, as ways to also bring to bear other tools that the federal government has for us to focus on customer experience. And because those senior leaders at all of these agencies are responsible for their agency's security posture, they also are helping us really to modernize our IT to deliver better customer experience. So giving technologists a seat at the table, giving them a voice in the room is really important to this. And, you know, technology is really upstream of this. And we are also focused on the downstream, which is performance management and making sure that we're driving impact. But to your question specifically about journey mapping, it's really important for people to understand, especially senior leaders at agencies who have so many demands on them, that aligning leaders and employees around who they're serving is really critical. You know, employees will come and go and journey mapping provides consistency. You know, this is who we are. This is who we're serving. Um, this is, these are the points on our customer journey. And these are the critical moments that matter to our customers is a really important rubric for all of us to have as federal leaders to make sure that we are providing that consistency to our employees and to the people that we serve. And I think this also not only inspires the federal workforce, um, it inspires other people to come and join us, including many of our private sector vendor partners, right? The contractors that are here doing so much important work on behalf of the federal government, having a journey map that is a true north of who the agency is, who the agency is serving, and how the technology and tools need to serve the public, I think is a unifying principle um, for all of those stakeholder groups that work hard every day on behalf of the American people. This has been the Business of Government Hour, a conversation with Claire Martirana, Federal Chief Information Officer and Administrator of the Office of Electronic Government within the Office of Management and Budget, OMB. Be sure to join us next time for another informative, insightful, and in-depth conversation on improving government technology and its effectiveness. Until then, subscribe, download, and listen to the entire interview at Podcast One, iTunes, or on your favorite podcast app, and as always at businessofgovernment.org.